Hello everyone and welcome to another computer software is your friend video. I've shown you how to install Windows 8, I've shown you the start screen and I've showed you the store up to now. So next I'm gonna start looking at some apps. How does that sound? I think that sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna start with the apps that come pre-installed with Windows 8. So to start, let's start from the mail app. Yes, the mail app, where you will find every single email that you configure in here. You can add several accounts. You can add your simpatico account, if you have one, that's in Canada you can add your gmail account of course you're gonna need to update the password you can add your new outlook account and you can add even more accounts in the settings in the accounts place and click add an account and you choose your Topic. So basically, if you choose Hotmail, very easy. You just enter your Hotmail and your password. It will auto configure. Same with Outlook. Same with Google. They've added another account. Um, email address, password. If you click Show More Details, it will allow you to configure the ports and everything. So if you're on uh, one of those email accounts that requires a certain proxy and certain settings this is how you do it and you'll be able to access it all right here now let's say that you want to create a brand new email you click the plus in the top right corner um, for, for the sake of it I'm gonna use Gmail here is where you can choose who you're going to be addressing it to, who you want to see it, well CC, you know it's... I'm sending you an email but this guy's part of it too. I'm the one sending the email but you know he's part of it. And of course you've got more options, you've got this BCC, another great place to put stuff, and then your priority settings. So now obviously up here you put your subject you put your message and then if you cl right click anywhere you're gonna get this bar down here which is gonna let you save the draft attach stuff uh, paste text or whatever in here change the font make it bold italic bold italic underlined and change the text color you can add an emoticon in the place of the text. Really good work, Julian. You can undo. You can redo. You can undo. You can make a list. You can make a numbered list. And that's it. If we go back to the settings, We've went through account about feedback permissions. Do you want it to show you notifications? If so, it will. Do you want to see it in the lock screen? When you lock the screen, it can give you uh, details or it can give you a number count of how many emails you haven't read yet. That's pretty much it with the mail app. Yep, that's the mail app. I'm not going to show you the people app in depth because I, I don't want to expose my contacts. But essentially, I'll, I'll have something up for the people app because it's also a Twitter and Facebook app. So you can use it to update your status. I'm going to show you how, just I can't show you with a video. Messaging. Uh, the messaging app is very simple. Here is your messaging app. If you click new message, it opens up the people thing again. 
it shows you all your contacts, who's online and whatnot. Um, if you right click, you can invite people, you can chat with multiple people at the same time, or you can change your status. It's a very simple app. Um, unfortunately, I can't reply to the Windows team. If you click on the Windows team, it won't do anything. And uh, all of your messages will be here. Now, of course, you can pin you can pin stuff. And uh, if you're chatting, you can chat here while working on the desktop at the same time. That's how it will look. And if ever you need to change or pay more focus here, you can minimize the other one. Um, and that's it for messaging. You just saw the desktop. The desktop features a brand new look. It's scrapped arrow, but it maintained its transparency and its color changing. Uh, one thing that you're going to find interesting is that Windows Explorer is now File Explorer. And of course you've got your libraries and your home group and everything like usual. Except now you have the ribbon, which of course you can minimize and you've got this file menu for other stuff that's it with the desktop um, this is this this is the uh, taskbar you got the clock you got the language settings you got the volume settings you know this is typical of a desktop nothing really different here except for the missing start button over there but that's no big deal because if you hover in the corner you will get this nice little start tile which you can click to of course you can always also go to the charms but if you have a calendar app that's also a good thing to have I'll show you that later because I don't want to expose my contacts photos I don't want to expose pictures of my friends so I'll get to that later um, the stock market app is very simple, well, the finance app, and uh, it gives you the top story, it gives you a, a little story of different main stocks, it gives you some news, some financial news, a watch list, and a whole bunch of um, market related stuff, and an ad. I guess that's why it's free and it's really nicely laid out you can click on one of these and it will load the story it will give you a nice graphic it's a very easy read just as you would expect very comfortable very nice really nice feel so if you're into business you have something to look forward to you can look at the currencies the United States dollar with comparison to the Canadian dollar the Canadian dollar uh, is below the United States dollar uh, that's enough with that of course the closing app swipe down here is the weather app now the weather app is pretty cool because it can detect where you are and it will tell you everything but I don't want to be tracked so I'm going to say block and as just as for fun I'm just going to see what it's like in I don't know Edmonton Alberta <laughs> let's see what Edmonton Alberta is like alright so I don't uh, in Canada we don't use Fahrenheit so the way to change that would be to right click which gives you two bars now you can choose your places world weather home change to celsius right there and you get something in celsius i didn't know it was that cool in edmonton uh, over here it's a lot warmer i'll tell you that um, in fact we're just starting to get out of the heat wave and uh... essentially you can refresh at any given time they give you several forecasts they don't, they don't only give you the Bing one and of course you can go to world weather which gives you a map and a really nice view New York 
and a whole bunch of other stuff. You can manage your places. Um, you can add a place. So you enter your city. Um, I guess it will only let me remove Edmonton if I add another city. So that's alright. And now if we go to the little minus button here, it zooms out and gives us a look at all of the tabs that we've been looking at. And if we go to the settings, uh, you have options, which is basically where you have a search history. If you go to about, it gives you a whole bunch of info there. Um, terms of use, permission. Do you have the right to find your location? Yes or no? Do you have the right to use it on the lock screen? I say yes. Very simple. That's it with world weather. Uh, Internet Explorer is a dumbed down browser. Very, very, very easy to use. Right click and you will have everything here including your tabs. Uh, you can have new and private tab, you can close all tabs, you can add a tab just like that. You've got your favorite websites. Um, I've got my test site which requires me to sign in. And of course you've got a whole bunch of settings and different things that you can do. Um, if you go to the settings and you go to internet options, you have a whole bunch of options. Uh, ask for the location, your zoom your flip ahead, your encoding, and all of this stuff really it's pretty simple to use, pretty simple to find. If you find a nice web page that you like, you can share it. And that's it. Uh, I already showed you the store in a previous video. A maps app is basically to allow you to explore the world or just to get directions. Again, if we go to the settings, um, permissions, very simple, it's only location stuff. SkyDrive is where you're going to have all of your files, it's pretty simple. You've got a sports app, which gives you all of your sports news, if you're into sports. And it gives you the sports schedule and all of this stuff. Again, just like with the finance app, you get a nice read, a nice look overall. If you need news, you go to news app and you can change the subscriptions in here. Um, my news. You've got Microsoft, you can add a section, you can add a news topic. Uh, sources, you can change who is your provider. For example, you can take uh, Canadian news if you're in Canada and all this um, you got a whole bunch of different uh, categories here politics and entertainment and technology and sports and lifestyle and science and music that's the news app uh, here's the Bing app pretty interesting it gives you a bunch of trending search uh, options and basically what it does is if you search for something it will show you, well, okay, popular now, Earthquake. It'll give you a whole bunch of results. Very nice display. And when you click on one of them, it's going to open an Internet Explorer. So, there's Bing. Travel app. Let's say that you're curious about the world and you just can't sit at home. Well, here's your Bing travel app, which will basically open the door to the world. You've got a games app where you can get games for your Xbox and for your PC and you can manage this kind of stuff in your activity. Now if it says here that you can't sign in Xbox games it is going to give me an error. That's because I am in Canada and it didn't recognize that I am in Canada. Of course by default Windows is gonna think that I'm an American. So you close the app, go to the settings and you basically do you basically type region and you do settings and you get the region setting here you change your location to Canada or whatever country you're in if it's not the United States 
and you're going to go back to the games app and it's going to sign you in which means you can buy stuff it means that you can keep track of your achievements in your games and that a whole bunch of different stuff and windows games and the xbox store that's enough of that you got a camera app straightforward you can take video or you can take pictures with it i'm not going to turn it on uh, you got a music app essentially it's your music where you can buy music or you can see what's on your computer um, you can change some settings here by default I've uh, told it to automatically go to my music because I don't really plan to use the store I already have the music I'm content I just want to be able to play it but go home this is how it's gonna look like when it first starts up for you you're going to have a whole bunch of music in the Xbox Music Store where you can preview music and you can buy music and this kind of stuff. Same thing goes with videos. Um, the video app is very straightforward. It's a full screen video store and you can buy you can buy or rent movies. Well, this is all of your videos. So it's what you own, but if you go to the Xbox store which is where it's going to load initially again same preference as uh, the music app to get the my videos when you open and of course you can buy and rent movies and TV shows Big Bang Theory like if you like the Big Bang Theory I love the Big Bang Theory really great show so there's the Xbox video and well, that's pretty much it for apps. We've pretty much gone through them. I've skipped over a few. I know, I know, I know. You want to see them. I'll get those in the future. Uh, subscribe. Uh, like the video. Like us on Facebook. Join us on Twitter. Join us on Google+. Plus. You know, that's the best way to keep up to date. Uh, another thing that you're going to want to uh, want to do is subscribe to this channel. If you like our videos, there will be more, and I will continue to keep going through Windows 8, leafing through it, showing you cool stuff, showing you the basics first, um, just so that, you know, you can get a feel of Windows 8, because if you read all of these tech sites everywhere, I know, I have a bias, I like it, I know, but if you read it everywhere, you're going to see a lot of people say, oh my god, it's horrible, it's an X-Vista it's not I can tell you that because if this was Vista it would be slow and it is not even close to slow it is a lot faster than Windows 7 and Windows XP so let's not start with the I didn't try it but it's gonna be Vista shenanigans again it's kinda like as if you know you go you know Apple releases a new operating system you don't upgrade but you say it sucks just because it's you know just saying, just saying, like if you agree. Um, so yeah, I'm giving you guys a chance to take a good look at Windows 8. Like it, hate it, that's fine. Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear what you think. These are the apps that come pre-installed, you can get more apps from the store. And uh, like always, this has been another Computer Software Is Your Friend video. Until next time.